All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, Babalu. <laughs> Great. Uh, first, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, welcome uh, first to Berkeley. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, but also uh, welcome to Citrus. That's the building that we're in right now. And also welcome to the home of the Berkeley Center for New Media. Uh, my name's Eric Paulos. Uh, I'm one of the sort of the chair for the program today, but it's really all about you and the other uh, panelists. I'll just sort of be guiding a little bit of the day. Um, I'm faculty here in electrical engineering computer science, uh, but I'm also, uh, and more importantly here, I am faculty in the Berkeley Center for New Media. And today we're uh, having this uh, symposium on robots and new media. This is our hashtag for those of you digitally inclined to keep the conversation going. Um, let me tell you a little bit about, for those of you who are not familiar with the Berkeley Center for New Media, because that's really the kind of reason that we're here, is this institution that's been here at Berkeley for a number of years to bring together uh, a wide range of practitioners to talk about issues that involve uh, interdisciplinary conversations very relevant to society and culture. Um, as I said, I'm a computer scientist, so this is my special encoding about the Berkeley Center for New Media. 10, 120, 35, 1. The Berkeley Center for New Media is turning 10 this year. This is, we've been around a decade of uh, sort of influence and impact here on campus, and uh, we'll be having a celebration later in the fall about this, but it's been a, a really amazing treat to uh, have something with this kind of uh, sustained growth within uh, the Berkeley campus. And we have about 120, uh, actually more than that, affiliated faculty, advisors, and scholars that are sort of part of this conversation. Uh, across 35 different UC Berkeley departments. So this includes places, you know, such as architecture and philosophy, film and media studies, art, art history, uh, performance studies, uh, music, school of engineering, journalism, law, the list goes on. I'm not going to go through all 35. Uh, and you have made it here to the one very special symposium that we like to hold uh, to draw together a conversation around a topic that has risen to a, a sort of relevancy that we'd like to have a conversation about. And I really appreciate you uh, attending and being part of this. Uh, a little bit more just on a kind of mission statement so you know where the center is situated. Our mission is to critically analyze and help shape developments in new media from cross-disciplinary and global perspectives that emphasize humanities and the public interest. Uh, it's, uh, and as I said, I'm a faculty member. It's directed by uh, Professor Greg Niemeyer, who's right here. He's our uh, fearless leader. Um, and I want to sort of, before we get started, because there's a lot of heavy lifting that went on to even uh, make this event happen, a lot of you have touched base specifically with some of these people, but I want to uh, make very uh, special call out to Laura Wolf, who you might have interacted with, who did a tremendous amount of organization and planning around logistics, and it's the reason that you probably even found this location and have a name badge and uh, that all of the sort of lights are on and things like that. Uh, Cesar Torres, who also uh, is the reason you have these beautiful programs and the website, um, the reason that a, probably a lot of technical things are functional here, um, he's behind the scenes. Um, and, and also, I want to thank Chris Myers, uh, Catherine Chandler, there's some drone videos that you'll see during the breaks, and she provided some of those. Some of our moderators, Shanti Ganesh, you'll hear in a moment. Also, Greg Niebar will be uh, making an appearance in the afternoon, uh, and Ken Goldberg for his uh, wisdom in sort of guiding some of this process. And it would be, uh, I don't want to miss uh, thanking the tremendous number of volunteers that are also behind the scenes here. So if we could just give them a round of applause, because they just did a lot of work to get this together. So the other, uh, the other thing is this also doesn't happen without sponsorship. And of course, this is uh, directed by the, the, the sort of organized by the Berkeley Center for New Media. But it really happens because of a lot of support, not only the Citrus organization, which is the Berkeley, this is, you're in the Citrus building. Uh, this is a campus organization around uh, Center for Information Technology Research in the interest of society. They provide a lot of the facilities, the reason we can be in this space and, and we can have this really um, nice place to meet and have this conversation. Also, the Townsend Center for Humanities, who's uh, provided a lot of uh, financial support and uh, been very um, supportive of the interdisciplinary conversations we've had throughout the years. And finally, the Netherlands, the Consulate General uh, and the Kingdom of the Netherlands actually this year um, had some really great uh, um, support to have this happen as well and brought in a really good focus across discipline. So let's just give a round of applause to thank them for all the support. So 
I'm just going to give a very brief introduction to the day, and then hopefully the conversation will continue. But I'll give a small amount of framing. And as I mentioned, we're here at the Berkeley Center for New Media, and the, and the conversation we're having is around robots and new media. Now, uh, this idea of media or medium, um, I'm sort of borrowing from the way that Marshall McLuhan approaches it. And he talks about it as kind of an extension of ourselves, or sort of more broadly, uh, some, any new technology. And a lot of you think of these as devices you carry or other kinds of uh, technology or media, but we're trying to think about how the robot itself becomes part of this conversation of a medium. And we want to direct that as part of the focal point of where we uh, have our discussions today. Robots, I think everyone has some, most people have some secret passion about robots. They're fascinating devices and systems and, for some people, creatures and beings. Even from the very coining of the phrase by Carl Kepek in the 1920s, uh, from the Rossum's Universal Robots, it was already declared that they should always exist. This is from the, actually from the play. If all of a sudden someone just stopped the production of robots, that would be a terrible blow to mankind. So, the difference I'm trying to, we're trying to have here is clearly we've largely, decades of robots have been focused on performing these tasks and roles largely scoped within industrial manufacturing. Um, these are perceived as largely sort of cold and calculating, kind of somewhat for some maybe boring. Some people can find a lot of fascination in this. I know I like machines, but as a sort of functional unit, they, they sort of achieve their goal and nothing more. But there's certainly a rise in recent uh, sort of culture that there's a different type of robotic platform that's come out. And I don't know how we imagine our robots in the future. Some people might be at this stage, some people maybe not. Uh, but the conversation is largely how we might imagine these kinds of systems, how we might want to think about interacting with them or not. So I think part of our conversation will be um, in some sense very optimistic and excited, but we'll also have some cautionary tales. Certainly, J.G. Ballard, uh, he said that robotics is the moral degradation of the machine. Why do we want to machines to look like us anyway? It's much more likely that we will be like machines in the future. So it's another conversation point. The other trend is clearly there's a, a lot of uh, low-cost and high-performance technologies and hardware has emerged, and we have... It's given rise to a lot of new people participating, new kinds of applications for social, personal, more expressive. We're talking about kind of emotional platforms and, and applications in this space. We have new kinds of practitioners. We have new kinds of systems. And we have basically a very interesting new conversation about where we, robots could uh, play a role in our society. And hopefully this uh, today can be a conversation about that. We'll, of course, be touching on some of the, uh, not just those opportunities, but there's certainly dilemmas. We have legal dilemmas and ethical dilemmas, uh, issues of control, and some are very philosophical in terms of how we want to interact, have them nurture us, care for us, watch over us. But we'll also be thinking about how they can emerge as these creative platforms, how they might be extensions of ourselves, enable us to express kind of creativity, maybe over a distance, create new objects, uh, empower new communities, and challenge our civil rights as well. The important thing is that, that together, uh, to kind of highlight the Berkeley Center for New Media is we're, we're having this conversation. And today, we have people representing engineering. We have computer scientists. But more importantly, we have folks from psychology, from cognitive neuroscience, philosophy, art, law, people that are in the industry of doing robots, from people that are designers, actually practitioners making this, uh, professionals, the amateurs, and especially you, all of you that are here as part of this conversation. To give you just a very high-level roadmap for today, uh, we're going to start off in just a couple minutes talking about uh, robots, cognition, and neuroscience, and that'll be moderated by Shanti, which I'll give an introduction in, in a few moments. We'll have a break, and then we'll have a sort of keynote by uh, Hubert Dreyfus, and then we'll have a lunch. If you bought lunch, it'll be provided. I'll have more information about how to locate your lunch. Uh, in the uh, afternoon, you'll be coming back, and we'll have another panel on some of the more uh, ethics and other opportunities around uh, how people can actually produce these kinds of systems. Uh, unfortunately, Jordan Crandall uh, is not going to be able to join us today. He had a last-minute sort of uh, emergency, and he won't be here. But we have uh, Stuart Geiger will be here to talk about. He is a very... Uh, um, He's a practitioner in actually building these systems, and he's very algorithmic about his approach, and he'll have a lot to offer to this panel. 
And then finally, we'll be finishing to reflect kind of more robots as metaphor and thinking about uh, how artists and others participate, how we can think about issues of the uncanny valley and where we really want to situate ourselves in a relationship to those. So I'm going to leave with just one uh, final quote uh, uh, of one of my favorite artists, Sean Tangley. He says, everything moves continuously. Immobility does not exist. Don't be subject to the influence of out-of-date concepts. Forget hours, seconds, minutes. Accept instability. Live in time. Be static with movement. Resist the anxious desire to fix the instantaneous, to kill that which is living. <laughs>